basically creates a path according to all the altitude constraints and creates a path of uh, usually a three degree glide angle all the way to the top of the descent, which is the end of the vertical descent path. And it's the beginning of our top of descent yes. to start the descent. Though you thinking you're flying at certain altitudes, but your indicated altitude is uh, never the same, almost never the same as the true altitude. It doesn't matter. I mean, you have to be humble and you have to approach every flight uh, having some triggers to contract this problem. I think here is a, is a, is a I mean, Vinav is great because if you, if you think like in the old days when pilots were actually calculating their top of descent by doing the altitude multiplied by three, doing a little bit of this and that, what happens is that the pilots couldn't make a good calculation for a top of descent. Well, they could make a good calculation, but was not really precise. And what happens is that normally they tend to start the descent too early or too late. And this sometimes is not very really efficient. So the good thing of Vinav is that basing on all the factors that you just explained, it calculates a very nice descent, top of descent, and then you start an idle descent every day. And people, the problem is that we also have to think that nowadays some islands, they have 400, 500 aircraft. And it makes a huge difference on the fuel efficiency. If everybody starts a good descent with idle thrust all the way down every day for the numbers of flights, it's a big plus, yeah. Yeah, it's basically better for fuel efficiency and it's better yeah. for a for a green uh, green planet. Also. Yeah, also true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's a very good point. Also, good. Good. So let's talk about the approach of uh, basically path based descent that's determined by instrument approach with serious vertical angle, and the approach is a unique segment and a phase within the descent phase. So, and the MIS approach is uh, similar to the climb phase, speed uh, based climb to operate determine altitude and waypoint, basically. Very good. So it basically the, takes into account all these, uh, the restrictions and everything, yeah. Exactly, it takes the vertical, uh, the BNAF, what it gives you it's uh, uh, restrictions between some altitudes, for instance, between 17,000 and 12,000 feet, you have to be within that those limits. It's taking into account the speed as well, which is really important because at some points, you will have to reduce the speed and you will not have to use uh, echo speed anymore because imagine your echo speed is 246, but at some waypoint you have to be at 220 knots. So the BNAF is going to help you. It's going to make it your life a lot easier to descend according to these parameters that you have to follow. The vertical uh, flight profile can be infrequently this, affected by speed and altitude restrictions uh, specified in the arrival procedure, as you can see in the next slide. Um, well, I, I just marked some uh, points. As you can see, the ground point, it's uh, what we were discussing before, between fly level 210 and 17,000 feet. And uh, you have a holding point over there, and then you continue on the same track, bound to roost, and right turn 248 track to the next point, which is Hapso, that you have to be, as you can see, at or above 14,000 feet. So the BNAP is going to help you in this, into all this profile. And then basically, when um, you reach some altitude and then you have to keep descending, it's going to give you a, a path of thousand feet per minute descent Good. to continue to continue with this um, altitude transition. Basically, yes, yes. So yeah, basically, Vinav is great even for our workload as a pilot. I mean, uh, if uh, you if you put the right information, the FM, FMS, FMGC, whatever you want to call it, depending on the aircraft, it will really, as you said, help you out to do, match these altitude and speed restrictions because we don't have to calculate all that. Well, we still have to do a calculation to make sure that we're going to do these altitude restrictions, but usually it really helps you out on the lowers your workload because it will take care of them as long as everything is fine on the FMS, FMGC. And this, again, since everybody, we, not everybody, but almost everyone now, in the airline world is capable to uh, meet all these altitudes and speed restrictions. ATC ca is capable to have a better air, air traffic flow management also. So that's a really good uh, good plus for us because we need to think that in the old days, there was no enough. So pilots, they had to do all of this by themselves. And then, of course, there will be a lot of mistakes and the ATC was, yeah, you were supposed to be at level 170 or below. Why are you, yeah. So it really helps, uh, air, you know, the, the big picture is, uh, is is huge in this enough. Very good. It's a lot, it's, it's a lot easier for, for us as a pilot to to follow the restrictions, basically. I mean, with the BNAP, uh, with the BNAP pass, yeah. Obviously, yeah. yeah, very good. It helps a lot more, yeah. So, well, as you can see in the next slide, this is uh, quite interesting, I think, uh, because it's gonna 
help us to uh, understand what uh, symbols we're going to use in the BNAP and uh, what is the meaning of those symbols, you know. As you can see, the vertical flight profile reflects the speed and altitude restriction specified on the flight path. And the, those are the constrained waypoints, basically, be, uh, formed by altitude. As you can see, the at altitude is between two lines. The, this altitude that are in between two lines in the Jepson chart, you are going to see, or Jepson charts or any other chart, because you can use different systems. But um, basically, the engineering symbol that is going to give you the BINA is those uh, two, three eye angles that they are like basically facing each other. And this is going to basically give you the information that it, it's at this altitude, you know? Yes. As above the altitude is, uh, as you can see, you can see the line underneath the 4,500 feet. And then you will have the symbol and the BINA above the triangle looking um, upwards. And the same, but opposite at or below with the triangle looking down as well. With the line on top, that means that this is the maximum and 4,500 feet, it's uh, the altitude, okay? And the window is between, when you have two different altitudes and you have to be between those two altitudes, basically, then you, have, you will have two numbers, as you can see, 12,000, 10,000, and you have one line above and one line below. And basically the triangles are the same, but they are uh, with um, basically a uh, distance between space, those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Within space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very All good. Right. Yeah, it's like having a, a floor and a, a floor and a roof on top. Sometimes, like in the four thousand four hundred, you have to be there. It's like in a house, you know. Very good. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Exactly. So I think it's quite clear this uh, this one and the Bina uh, the sun path is constructed uh, upstream. That's uh, really important yeah. to know and to understand. Beginning at the lowest waypoint uh, constraint up to the final cruise altitude. The end of the descent waypoint, generally the runway or the misapproach point, is the anchor position of the vertical descent path. This is really important to understand. So it's gonna be basically from the from the um, runway or the misapproach point, and it's gonna create a path upwards, okay? That's what we need to understand, up to the top of the descent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Basically, it's just basically creates a path according to all the altitude constraints and creates a path of uh, usually a three degree glide angle all the way to the top of the descent, which is the end of the vertical descent path. And it's the beginning of our top of descent yes. to start the descent. But yes. in, in terms of the basics, how it's going to be created, this is the top of the descent is the end of the vertical uh, descent path. Yes, exactly, okay. because it cannot do it uh, uh, the other way around, because if you calculate the top of descent to do a constant idle descent on the way down to the landing, the problem is that if you have an altitude constraint that is here, it cannot fly like that. He has to go like that. So the way they create, they start from the from the end and they go up upstream. So, yeah, exactly. That's an, exactly. very important. Yeah. Uh, some, some things that I was doing when I was doing training, you know, and uh, some new cadets, they need to understand, for instance, that the initial approach uh, six, most of the times you have to be at 20 knots and uh, sometimes at 3,000 feet to start the approach or some design. So you have to take the altitude and the speed. And then from that point, you have to start creating. But BNAP is going to help you. It's a really good tool because it's going to do all this for you, for us yeah. as a pilot, you know? So basically, it's, this is what you have to understand. As you were saying, Gabriele, um, basically respecting all the altitude constraints and the speed constraints that you have in the, the whole path. Yeah. Very good. As you can see in the, in the, in the next slide, top of descent, uh, well, if we start from the beginning, from the uh, from the point that we were saying, the BNAF on the dot, uh, well, the number one, it says the BNAF begins at the runway waypoint constraint altitude, and then follows the vertical angle upstream. As you can see, this is the the, the, the waypoint that we create, this uh, star, and then you can see the three degree glide angle, which is the instrument approach vertical angle code in the navigation database. And then we can see the symbols that we were discussing before. And um, at or above 2,200 feet, you will see the triangle, you have to be above that. So the path is completed beginning from the end of the descent constraint and vertical angle to the next constraint that gets into the way 
at 4,000 in this feed, uh, sorry, in this uh, drawing, yep. as you can see in, in red, uh, and then to the next constraint and so on. So you can see the next one is at or below 8,000 to 20 knots maximum speed, and you will see the triangle looking down and the BNA plans for deceleration to one of the speed restrictions to 50 knots, obviously below 10,000 feet, most of the times, unless uh, you, you've been called by AGC saying uh, maintain high speed or any other speed. Then um, the next point is uh, that the one where we were saying some space in between, because you have to be between 12,000 and 10,000. And then this is the last constraint to the top of the sand. Uh, and it's computed using uh, available performance data to achieve an econ efficient path all the way down to this point, to this constraint. Very good. This is, uh, yes. Yeah, this is a very quite good picture. self explanatory. Yeah. 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 I think that with this picture, you can understand mainly what the BNAV is going to do all the way yeah. up. Yeah. Or all the way down, basically. All the way, yeah. So basically, what it does when we put everything on the FMC, it says, okay, I want to be on the end of this end, which is the star point at the end uh, on the left, close to the run. I said, okay, which altitude restriction do I have throughout my descent? So it's going to say, okay, I need to be at or above 1,200 there. Then I need to be at 4,000 there. Then I need to be uh, at or below 8,000 and so on. So, and then by respecting all these other restrictions, it's going to give us a perfect. Uh, top of this end. If we will have not have any uh, restriction, that will be a nice straight line almost down to the runway, taking care, taking into consideration the decelerations basically. But yeah, this is a very good picture. Hopefully, it's clear for everybody. Perfect. So we will keep on going on the performance oh. path and uh, and it's a uh, it's a compute descent path at idle or near idle power. From top of the sand to the first constraint waypoint. Exactly what you were saying, Gabriel. Yep. You know, if there are no constraints, it's going to be an echo descent, idle descent, all the way down, and uh, at a calculated uh, glide path of about three degrees. And uh, as we can see, compute descent path at idle. So it's basically what we're seeing. We can see in this uh, picture uh, from the top of the sand to the to the first constraint. It's idle descent path. Yeah. So basically, what we were discussing. The optimized profile descent and ideal performance path. It's basically it's an interrupted uh, performance path from top of descent to the final approach uh, fix. Well, same as what we're saying, basically. Yeah. And yeah. the geometric path is a different one. It's compute 3D point to point descent path between two constrained waypoints or when tracking a prescribed a vertical angle. So the geometric path is a shallower descent. And typically, it's a non-idle path. That's what yes. I was saying before, that it's going to be a 1,000 feet per minute, more or less, following a descent, but not as economically uh, study as before with the idle descent all the way down. Yes. Because yes. there are some constraints that we have to respect. Yeah. Yes. One thing is, can you explain what, what does it mean, idle or non-idle uh, uh, path? Idle or not idle path. So yeah, when it, when it descends uh, idle, it's uh, basically with no, no thrust, yes. you're not going to need any thrust. Uh, so, and um, as, as uh, we were saying, the, the um, FMS is going to calculate it, uh, with all the data that you have uh, put into, into the system. And the idle descent is going to be without power, basically. And non-idle, it's with power. And uh, why? Because with the non-idle, it's going to respect some constraints and basically it's at some point, it's not going to be able to maintain that path to the next waypoint constraint because of the, because if uh, idle thrust, it will make some uh, some difference. I mean, it will be below that altitude that you want to be. So yes. that's why you have to be with that thrust to maintain that uh, that path. Sometimes, basically, the altitude constraints are very low. So you have to descend yeah. first a lot, then you're gonna be low because you have your respect the altitude constraints. So then you need to have a trust. Otherwise, if you keep idle trust, you're basically gonna land before the run. And that's not really exactly, ideal. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, it's not recommended. Exactly. To maintain those constraints, you have to add some trust. Yeah. That's a non-idle uh, descent because it cannot do anything else better. Yeah. Because yeah. The, the, the chart is calculated to, to accomplish with those altitudes. Yes, yes, very yeah. good, very good, cool. Uh, we're going to talk about the computation of the path that it is uh, influenced by several factors and basically the airplane type and the performance. Some and uh, not all FMCs contain the airplane uh, performance data as well. 
the gross weight of the uh, another uh, airplane specific data, accuracy of the forecast wind inputs, anti icing that can create a idle idle trust, and the actual weather they that uh, basically take into account the wind and the temperature. Very good. So this is going to affect our descent, and um, then we're going to talk about, um, for instance, if uh, should an unforecast uh, tailwind occur, what is going to affect us, uh, how it's going to affect us in the BNAV profile. You know, the BNAV will attempt to maintain the path, and if the speed increase uh, according to the ground, because we can have more tailwind pushing back. I mean, pushing, uh, pushing, pushing us. And if the speed increases and approach to maximum operating speed, BMO, the BNAV will sacrifice the path and then shallow the descent to prevent the overspeed. Because if continue dive uh, the airplane into the bean, vertical BNAV path, it's going to increase more and more the speed and it's going to reach this uh, uh, BMO or the maximum operating speed. Yes. So basically to protect us, the BNAV, what it's going to do is basically shallow the descent profile to maintain and uh, this speed within limits. Okay? Yes. So it's going to take, it's going to protect us. Yes. But if I'm expected to win results in an in increase of, uh, in air speed, more than 10 knots uh, to maintain the BNA pass, the CDU message drug required is going to, is going to be displayed. And then we, we can do many things, you know, and uh, basically, but the most, um, the most important will use the speed brakes because um, reduced thrust, if it's an econ speed descent, it's going to be already idle. Yeah. So basically what we can do is shallow the path or uh, just uh, use the speed brakes to avoid to increase the speed, keep on going on the speed as well. Yes, yes, because it's very important uh, to understand that the aircraft has different priorities. So it's, the, the path is a good priority, but safety is uh, more important than the path. So if he sees that the safety will be compromised by going above the MMO, VMO, the, the, the aircraft will say, okay, I don't care about the path anymore. What is my priority is the speed. So that's uh, very good. Cool. Yeah, because the problem is, enough, uh... yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, the BNAV, it can go, it, 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 it can disengage even if the limit uh, speed is, is exceeded. Yeah. Know? So that will, uh, just to protect us and to let us know that we are above that speed that is calculated in the SMS. Yeah, very good. Very, very good. As you can see in the, uh, in the picture that we have underneath uh, the text, it's basically, you can see how the, the path is going to change because of this unforecast tailwind. And uh, it's gonna push us out of the uh, out of our vertical path because of this wind. Yeah. It's gonna happen more or less the opposite. Well, actually, the opposite. If we have headwind, we're gonna talk about now. In the next slide, you can see it's it's basically what we're gonna what what need to do. What we need to do in this kind of situation to maintain the path. The path it's it's gonna maintain the path, but it's gonna need more trust. Why? Because with the idle thrust, we're going to lose some speed. And if the speed decreases, the other throttle increases to maintain the pin-up speed uh, target that we have. Yes. As you can see in the, in the slide. Yes. Okay. It's, exactly. It's the opposite. Yeah. It's the opposite, basically. Very good. And uh, yeah, again, it's very important to understand here is we are talking about unforecast. So something that we couldn't yeah. plan because normally we put the wind also on the FMC and by the wind that we put in, it calculates a good path that will take care, we take into account the wind. But if that's the wind, headwind or tailwind is higher than the one we put in the FMC, then that is basically what will happen. Very good, very good. Exactly, exactly. In the next slide, uh, we can see the temperature error, which is gonna affect us as well. Um, as you were saying, Gabriel, obviously we're gonna put some data into the FMS. Either it can be wrong because we, we introduce the data incorrectly, or it can be different than the, the one we put in the beginning because some of the companies, they use some methods to update this information every, every hour or even with, the, um, with some uh, systems that we have in the plane, we can have uh, the information and uh, the actual information. But uh, some of the companies as well, they have the information, long flight, four hours, and then the situation has changed and you, you don't have updated information. So basically we need to counteract for this unforecast uh, wind or unforecast uh, temperature. Uh, so we can see the temperature is gonna affect us um, uh, in the angle as well. 
and uh, vertical path angle will be different with temp temperature. When the temperature rises, the distance between the pressure levels increase, resulting in a steeper glide path. So as you can see, this is the, the blue line, which is uh, ISA plus 15 degrees, and the vertical path angle is going to be 3.2 instead of uh, 3. And the, the opposite as well when it's, uh, when it's um, a lower temperature. It's, uh, it's going to be a shallower descent angle. What I will point out in this slide as well is uh, then it's something that we need to take into account. You know, when it's, uh, the temperature is cold, it's going to give us a shallow descent angle. That means that the plane is going to be lower than expected. Yeah. And that could lead, uh, give us uh, some safety problems. So yes, compromise, yes, you know, with yes. the rain. Yeah, I made a I made a video. I think last video where I actually talked about the uh, the temperature, how the temperature affects the paths and the angle, and it's, uh, especially because there is a saying that's from high to low, beware below. You know, when you go from high temperature to low temperature, uh, beware below, because basically, even though you're thinking you're flying a certain altitudes, but your indicated altitude is uh, never the same, almost never the same as the true altitude. So on a cold day, your true altitude will be lower than the indicated altitude. So that's why. Exactly. Yeah. And, and another thing is really important when it comes into the next slide is the q &A, the yep. blunder error, which is uh, basically in, in the next slide, as you can see, I just said uh, we depicted a graphic here that you can easily see how it's going to affect the q &H as well in the right path that we have to follow or the one that we're following because of our wrong QNH, you know? Yeah. As you can see, there is a, an ar a red arrow because we are flying below the path expected, and that's, that could be dangerous, as we were saying as well with the low temperature. And um, the QNH, imagine the QNH, the actual QNH is uh, 1010 hectopascal, and um, the QNH set by the crew is 1000 hectopascals, safe altitude but can be unstable when visual because it's going to be 300 feet upwards on the expected uh, bina path profile yes yes but imagine the crew is setting up uh, uh 10 20 10 more of the actual q and h this is a risk because it's going to be 300 feet downwards and uh, to avoid the blunder error there are some procedures that the company follows to preset the q and h before the top of the sand compare for cast and uh, actual uh, with actual approach checklist the do the approach checklist the the 2500 radio altitude and altimeter call as well it's something that they, they, the companies they use to contact those uh, things and of course uh, another tool that we will discuss maybe in some other uh, some other videos uh, of the BSD the vertical situation display yeah this is gonna be a really nice tool to help us as well to contract that uh, blunder error. Yes. really important also. Yes. There is a big point here, I think, to make is that uh, we as a pilot, uh, if we put the wrong QH, we will and um, we will never see it until the, the end. I mean, if you don't spot the the error uh, at the early stage, we're going to do all the design and we're going to have all the information about it. We are actually on, pro on profile and everything is fine because as you said, it's calculated using the QNH that we put in. So if you put the wrong QNH, we're going to have the wrong information. So we think we are on profile, but maybe we are low. And that's why it's important to understand and always keep in mind, have an idea where you should get this 2,500 radio altimeter score. Because I, I've seen many people, they just, when we have the 2,500 radio altimeter, they say, yeah, okay, terrain noted, or oh, terrain is there, yeah. But where is it? Where are you? I know the terrain is there because otherwise you will not get a 2,500 feet radio altimeter call. But are you in the position, in the right position? So always understand that this 2,500 radio altimeter call, uh, always cross check that is in the right uh, time that you received. Because if you received and you're still uh, 50 miles out of the run, that might be, it's not really. I know the terrain is there. Yes, it's there because you get a 2,500 uh, radio altimeter call. But the problem is the terrain is there. You are not you are not supposed to be there. That's why it's important to always kind of have an idea: Am I getting this call in the right in the right place, or am I off? You know, because uh, it's, exactly. It's, I mean, it's just like uh, and something that is important, and I I point out really many times in in training <clears throat> is even though as I, as I said. You have more than 10,000 hours or whatever, you know, and you've been flying for 20 years or more. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you have to be humble and you have to approach every flight 
uh, having some triggers to contract these problems, you know, these problems that you can face in a flight because sometimes we are tired, we're flying a lot this week, or, or, or even we don't have, um, when, when we start as a cadet, you know, and we don't have that information. So basically we need to take this into account because this is safety. This is gonna compromise our flight, you know? Yeah. So what to do? Basically just get the information, compare the information, check again. Do not worry about checking every now and then. Yeah. Why? Because you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be a safe pilot. And this is a, safety is the, the, the major concern yeah. for us. Yeah. Okay, more than times and every, obviously you have to be on time. You have to perform well in many ways. You have to be efficient and everything, but safety is the key, you know? Yes, and exactly. So this, this things affect safety. So it doesn't matter, especially if you have 20,000 hours uh, or you have 300 hours. This is something important that you have to keep in mind and have some tools, some triggers to counteract these uh, possible problems. Very good. Excellent point. Very good point. Good. Yeah. Amazing. Check. We can set to 7-0, please. 